Good morning. Just to review uh, what we have done till now, uh, we have looked at the force method of analyzing indeterminate statically indeterminate structures. Then we've looked at the displacement method for analyzing structures. And uh, finally, we looked at the moment distribution approach, which was an iterative approach to solving structural analysis. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to change gears and move into uh, what we call as the matrix methods of structural analysis. Uh, you will see that uh, the matrix methods of structural analysis are uh, nothing but uh, the force method and the displacement method written in a slightly different uh, format. And uh, today I am going to be discussing uh, how to use flexibility approach. And there are two approaches in matrix methods. One is known as the flexibility approach and one is known as the uh, stiffness approach. So today I am going to be discussing the flexibility approach to uh, structural analysis. This is the matrix method. Okay. Flexibility based matrix. methods. So, what exactly is the flexibility approach? Uh, let us uh, now look at a statically determinate structure. Uh, this is the structure and you can see uh, if you look at it, uh, 6 uh, are the uh, equations of motion, 4 unknown reactions and 2 forces. So, it is a statically determinate structure. This is subjected to loads R1 and R2. Okay? Now, note that uh, in a um, statically determinate structure, you do not need um, any method to compute the uh, forces in the members, because the forces in the members can always be computed using equilibrium. Okay? However, this problem I am going to state it a little bit differently. I am going to say, that find out the forces in all the members and find out the displacements <coughs> corresponding to the degrees of freedom. Here also you will see how many degrees of freedom does the structure have. You will see that there are three joints. So, three joints per joint you have two degrees of freedom in a truss remember. Two degrees of freedom, one translation in the horizontal direction, one vertical direction. So, 2 degrees of freedom per joint and you have 4 restraints, 2 hinges. So, the number of degrees of freedom are 2 and these are the displacement, horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. So, my question here is and let me say that I have this as E A 1 and this as E A 2. Okay. This is length 1, this is length 2. Anything else? We have got the complete information. Okay. So, the problem statement here is given loads R 1 and R 2 find A so, this is member 1 and this is member 2. Find forces in members and B the 
displacements R1 and R2. So these are the problem statement. Okay. And <clears throat> I'm going to how would you do this in normal? In normal case, you would find out the forces directly in terms of R1 and R2. You can always find out the forces. Okay. And once you find out, because all you need to do is take actually in this particular case, just take um, equilibrium of joint B and these are the two unknown forces and take sigma f x equal to 0, sigma f y equal to 0 and you can find out the two forces. That is it. I mean member forces are very simple. So, finding out the forces in members is just equilibrium and then how would you find out displacement R1 and R2? Well, corresponding to R1, I would apply a virtual, uh, you know if I am using the principle of virtual work, I would apply a virtual force uh, equal to 1 uh, corresponding to R1 and then find out the virtual forces and then take internal virtual work and external virtual work and you've got uh, equated and you can find out for R1. Okay. So th these are the steps that you would follow in, uh, in a normal uh, kind of a situation. So let me just write that down in a particular manner. Okay. So using using equilibrium okay you can actually find out force in member 1 is a function of r1 and r2 and similarly force in member 2 is also a function of R1 and R2. Okay. So, these two you can find out using basic equilibrium. Okay. Now, let me say I am going to use start using notations uh, which are going to I am going to stick through these notations all the way through. Okay. So, I am going to say uh, this is slightly different from what I I am going to say that this is equal to S1 and this is equal to S2. Up till now I have been using force in member 1, force in member 2. Let me denote, I am just using now uh, notation, I am defining notation and I am saying that let me call the force in member S1 and member S2. Okay. Then I can say if you look at it that S i can be given in terms of B i into R. What does this mean? This essentially means that S 1 is equal to B 1 1 R 1 plus B 1 2 R 2 and S 2 is equal to B 2 1 R 1 plus B 2 2 R 2. What are these coefficients? B11 or I'll put it as BII is member force in member I'm calling this BIJ okay just to be general mem force in member I due to load R J equal to R1. So, in other words this is defined 
as the member bij is defined as the force in member i due to a load rj equal to 1 okay so this is the definition of bij in other words i can write this in this format i'm using uh, matrix so if i write s as a row vector containing s1 and s2 i can actually write it as think about it b11 b12 b21 b22 r1 This is the vector of member forces. This is the vector of loads on the structure. And this is the matrix which actually is a force relationship which can be evaluated using equilibrium. Think about it. How will I evaluate this vector? Think about it. How will I find out this vector. This vector I could find out by this. This structure applied to a unit load and the force. So let me put it this way. This is equal to B11 and this is equal to B21. Okay, so therefore in this matrix if you look at it each vector each column vector can actually be found out by solving through equilibrium putting a load equal to 1 corresponding to the load R1 and unit load and find out the member forces by taking equilibrium of joint B you can find out the member forces. These member forces are denoted as B11 and B21. So you can find out this. Then how would you find this out? This you could find out by taking the same structure, applying a unit load and finding out the member forces. This would be B1, B22. So you see what we are doing here is really saying that look I don't care what load there is on the structure. In this particular structure what are the possible applied loads? Well the number of applied loads that you will have you will see is always equal to the degrees of freedom and each load is applied corresponding to a degree of freedom. Look at it. How many other loads can you apply on this structure other than these two corresponding to the degrees of freedom? So loads, whether you have these loads or not is not relevant. You know you might have a situation where only R1 is not equal to 0 okay, or R2 is not equal to 0 and R1 equal to 0 or you may have both R1 and R2. You see the procedure that I am developing okay, does not depend on whether a load exists on the structure. You see these values are not, I mean these values you can find out but you see this is independent of what these values take up because these are, what is this? This is the member forces due to R1 equal to 1. This is member forces due to R2 equal to 1. Okay, And therefore this is a very simple, you can find these out Normally you know these displacements, you can always find out the member forces. So therefore, all I am saying is that I am using equilibrium. Okay? However, even though I am using equilibrium, I am saying that I am writing down uh, the member forces in terms of the loads. Okay? And therefore, uh, I can always uh, write it in this fashion finally, that I can say 
I'm going to continue in this fashion. I'm not going to put it together. I just put it together. This is obtained for all I. So for every member you can actually compute uh, this uh, this vector. In this particular matrix, in this particular case, since this is a, a one by one in, in a in a truss, this is a one by one, and this is n by one, depending on how many degrees of freedom there are. And you will see that this is equal to. So if this is a column vector, this is a row vector. Okay, row vector into column vector gives you a scalar. Okay, so we can evaluate this. This can be found out. B I found through equilibrium. Okay. Now, so this is the actual load. These are the actual member forces. Now, let me find out what the member deformations are. So, if I look at deformation in member 1, what is member deformation? If SI is the load, okay, then you will see that it's SI into Li upon EAI. What is uh, SI upon AI? SI upon AI is the stress, uh, uniform stress in the member. Then SI upon EAI is the strain, uniform strain in the member and uniform strain uh, integrated over the whole length, essentially if it's a uniform frame, uh, strain integrated over the whole length is going to be just strain into Li and this is the deformation in the member. Okay. Now this I have been using till now delta. However, I am going to use consistent formulation. So I am calling this V1. V1 is the actual deformation in the member 1 due to the load S1. Okay. So this is the deformation in the member due to the loads. Okay. What is V2? Deformation, sorry, deformation in member 2 is equal to S2 L2 upon EA2. Note that we are just saying the lengths could be different, EAs could be different. Whether they are different or not actually depends on a particular structure. Here note that I am not making any assumption excepting for the fact that the structure is a statically determinate one so that I can relate the member forces to the, the only assumption till now is that it is statically determinate and of course that the members are uniform. Okay, That is an assumption. Uh, uh, so these are the two, only two assumptions statically determinate structure and uniform members. That's the only two assumptions that I have made. If I can do that, I can find this out and I can find out the deformation in the member. Okay. So if you look at it, okay, I'm going to call this as VI, which is equal to LI upon E A I into S I. Okay, th I'm just rewritten this particular thing. Now think about it. What does this relate? This actually is a relationship between the member force. This is a force deformation relationship, or if you want to call it, you can call it deformation force relationship. Okay, and I can uh, say this that what is this particular quantity signify? Think about it. 
this quantity is the deformation in a member due to a unit member force. Deformation member I due to unit SI. Okay. And this by definition is called as the flexibility of member I. So what is flexibility of member I? It's equal to Li upon Eai. What is the flexibility? What is the physical definition of the flexibility? The physical definition of the flexibility is the deformation in member due to a unit member force. Okay. So once we have that, this implies that Vi is equal to FISI. And in general, I can write. In this particular case, Vi happens to be 1 by 1, SI happens to be 1 by 1, and therefore Fi is also 1 by 1. But I can actually relate it in this fashion, that if I have uh, more than one member force, okay, then the deformation corresponding to that force is going to be related through the flexibility matrix or in this particular case it's the flexibility coefficient. Uh, okay, so I am going to just keep it in this fashion. Okay, now since this is true and I can find this out and note that I know this because I know this and this. Loading is normally given. Okay, so I can find this out. Okay, if I substitute this into this, what do I get? You will see that I get Vi is equal to Fi into Bi into R. This is just I have substituted Si equal to Bi R into Vi equal to Fi Si. That's, that's all I have done. Okay. So, what does this relate actually? In this particular case, since I am dealing with a trust member, this is a 1 by 1, this is a 1 by 1, this is a 1 by n, and this is n by 1. Okay. So, now <coughs> here the, the, the major point is that what does, this what does this give me? This gives me the member deformation in terms of the member loads where this is given by the force deformation relationship of a member and this is given from equilibrium. Okay? Now, now what is the next step? Next step is note that what my ultimate goal is given these loads what are R1 and R2 because note that I have already found out the member forces. The first thing that I did was find out the member forces because they are related in terms of Bi and Bi you can always obtain by actually uh, you know solving the equilibrium equations for the statically determinate structure. So the next step is I am trying to find out R1 and R2. How would I find out R1 and R2? Well, we know that due to this load we have real deformations in the members. So if I use this concept that I have these and I want to find out R1, what would I do? I would apply a unit virtual force corresponding to the degree of freedom R1. Okay, so let's do that. So unit multiplied by R1. Note that since I have only applied a unit virtual force corresponding to R1, uh, the virtual force corresponding to R2 is 0. So therefore that will not do any work. So this is equal to the external virtual work. What is the internal virtual work? Internal virtual work is going to be equal to the SI 
these are the virtual forces due to the unit applied load corresponding to R1 multiplied by Vi I am continuing the fact that they are scalars ok so what does this give me virtual member force times the deformation this is the work done in each member this summed up over all the members is going to give me the internal virtual work so that means I have to now compute what I know this do you, do you see this I know this ok because I know this 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 I know this so I know this now the only thing that I need to find out is what are the member forces due to a unit virtual force corresponding to R1 but no, look at it let's go back Wh which was R1 R1 was this horizontal this degree of freedom so what is my um, degree of, what is my uh, force virtual force is this and what are the uh, virtual member forces look the member forces are this these are the same because if I apply whether this force is real or whether it's virtual it makes no difference the member forces are going to be identical ok so I know what those are so I just need to substitute those ok and what are those these are equal to in this particular case B11 into 1 into V1 that is this is the member for virtual member force due to the unit uh, moment times the deformation plus B21 into 1 into V2 ok so think about this what is this if you look at this you will see that remember that these two ok let me uh, forget this so this essentially means that this R1 is equal to B V1 into this thing then the next equation I need to find out R2 ok so I apply a unit unit virtual force corresponding to R2 and that's my external virtual work my internal virtual work is again going to be SI ok into VI but this SI is due to this degree let's see what that is look at this R2 is this degree of freedom so if I apply unit load it's going to be B1 whether this is virtual or real it makes no difference it's going to be this only thing is if this is virtual these are virtual forces ok so if you look at this this implies that R2 is equal to B12 into 1 into V1 plus V22 into 1 into V2 if I write this do you notice something I can write this these two equations in matrix form what would that become you will see that this implies R1 R2 I'm just writing it in matrix form B11 B21 B12 B22 into V1 V2 note that I have all I have done is written these two equations in a simultaneous in a matrix form that's all I have done but note something what does this look like ok remember that I had S is equal to B I R you can look at this this you will see 
is going to be equal to and if I take sorry SI equal to or I can write it as S equal to B R where S since I have two if you look at it this is what I have written earlier this one so S is a 2 by 1 because I have two members this is B into R B is B11 B12 B21 B22 okay so this in this particular case is 2 by 1 in this particular case is 2 by 2 and what is B B is equal to B11 B21 B12 B22 so if you look at this what is this equal to you will see that this is nothing but equal to B transpose. So this is very interesting. You see S is equal to v, BR but if I use virtual work I get that R is equal to B transpose V where V is a 2 by 1 each uh, column each member in the column vector corresponds to the displacement and this is a 2 by 1 this is a 2 by 2 virtual work gives this this is equilibrium this is from virtual work very interesting okay you notice something very interesting and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now split it up I'm going to split it up and you will see that this can be written in this format R is equal to summation B I transpose V I over all. What is this now? This is the deformation in each member. Let me see what what this implies. This implies that here it means that R is equal to B11 BI transpose BI transpose if you look at it would be equal to what is BI? BI is B11 okay b12 okay so if you look at it this is going to be equal to b i'm going to rewrite this r1 is equal to b11 v1 and r2 is equal to V2 and V1 plus R1 you will see is equal to V2 and V2 plus V2 to V2 it's just summation okay now if I put this let's see what happens here what is VI equal to VI is equal to FI BI into R. So I'm now going to plug that in. If you see this, R will then be equal to summation of over all the members BI transpose FI BI into R. Note that R is outside, so that actually the the thing that you have is this. Very interesting. Very interesting. This part comes from equilibrium. This is SI equal to BIR. Then FI into SI is VI. 
and then from virtual work we know that R is equal to Bi transpose Vi and therefore ultimately when you put it all together you get this. Okay. Now this interesting point is that that means that this particular term this particular term is summed up over all i's. What is this term actually? If you look at this, what is this term totally? It relates the displacement to load. So if you look at it, this represents something like that if these were 1, what would these be? These would be the displacements given unit load. Okay? So this matrix I can call it as Fi and summed up over all i is equal to F and I can write it in this fashion. Where this is now the structure flexibility matrix. And this is the contribution of member I to F. Okay? So now, <clears throat> the reason, now you see I can find the displacements. Why? Because I know this I know this, I know this, so I can find out this and summing it up over this, I can find this, find this and once I have this, note one thing that nowhere do I need to find out anything. Once I found this out, given the load, I can always find out the displacements of the structure. This is the beauty of the matrix method that once you go through the steps, the steps are identical to what we have done earlier. Okay, using the virtual work principle, we've already discussed the virtual work principle. The only thing that I have done is explicitly write down the virtual work, uh, you know, first equilibrium. I've just related it in a general format. Okay, and ultimately I've come up with an equation which directly relates the displacements and the loads directly through the structure flexibility matrix. And this is the reason why this is known as the flexibility approach matrix method. Okay? Because ultimately you really are finding out the structural flexibility and if you look along the way you are actually finding out the member flexibility term. Okay, so this entire procedure is set up very, very easily. Now, what I am going to do right now is, of course, uh, what is the assumption? The assumption is that I have a statically determinate structure. Okay, and of course, it is a truss type structure because the only forces in the members that I have written till now are truss because actual forces only actual forces and actual deformations. Okay? Let me just illustrate this and then I will show you next time that this exactly the same thing can be written down even for a statically indeterminate structure. Okay? So let us see how we can find out the member forces uh, by, uh, by applying it to a particular um, structure, actual example structure. So let us have a situation. Okay, uh, this here is 4 meters, 
this is 3 meters this is 3 meters this is 4 meters uh, both of them have the same EA same EA okay and uh, let me just put some loads here 10 kilonewton let me apply uh, 20 kilonewton and the problem statement is find member forces and find displacements R1 and R2 okay so this this is uh, 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 what the problem statement is so this is a statically determinate structure right so I can actually find out uh, the member forces directly so let me find out the member forces the only difference is I am not going to find out the member forces directly for the given load I'm going to be using the matrix method. If I use the matrix method then I do not solve the structure for the loads directly. What I do is okay I put R1 equal to 1 and find out the member forces okay so let us see uh, what do I get okay uh, this is a 4 3 slope and this is a 4 3 slope this way Okay, so if I take uh, sigma f y equal to 0 at, let me call this a, b, c at joint b, okay, you will see that f a, b, which is my member 1 and b, c is member 2, okay, f a, b, and F B C I'll call this in my notation as S1 and this as S2 okay so these are the forces in the members and note that member forces are positive when you have um, tensile forces okay that is the assumption uh, that we make and we're going to continue making that okay positive tensile forces negative so now once I do that, okay, let's see what happens. The, the vertical component of S1 is going to be 3 by 5 S1. And note that since this is positive, this is positive, you will see that S1 is downwards, okay, the comp vertical component, then plus... 4 by 5 S2 since there is no vertical force it has to be equal to 0 ok so what does this give me this gives me that S2 is equal to minus 3 by 4 S1 ok and this is sigma F y equal to 0 and sigma fx equal to 0 gives me that 4 by 5 s1 that's the horizontal component pulling in this direction so that's minus okay then plus this direction 3 by 5 s2 
plus 1 is equal to 0. But note that S2 is equal to 3 by 4. Okay, so this becomes 9 by 20 S1. 9 by 20 minus 16 by 20 is going to be minus. So this implies minus 7 by 20 S1 plus 1 is equal to 0. This implies S1 is equal to 20 by 7 and S2 is equal to 2. So if you look at it, this minus 3 by 4, so this is going to be minus Satisfy yourself that satisfy yourself that this indeed does satisfy. Take three by five of twenty by seven, it's going to be equal to twelve by seven, and take this plus twelve minus twelve by seven is equal to zero. And here take minus mm, four. Mm, okay. Uh, minus uh, four by five. So this is going to be equal to minus 16 by 7 plus 9 by 7. That's going to be equal to minus 7 by 7. So that's minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. It implies that, uh, but note that this is S1 due to R1. So what is this? This is actually, I found out that B11 is equal to 20 by 7 and B21 is equal to minus 15 by 7. These are what I have found out. Now, let's move on to the other one, which is R2 equal to 1, and then let us find out this. And I'm going to directly put that F A B, if I put R2 equal to 1, is actually B12. And F B C is going to be equal to B22. So if I write it in this fashion, we will see that this is 3, 4, this is 4, 3. Okay? And so, sigma Fy, uh, sigma Fx equal to 0 gives me that 3 by 5 S1 minus 4 by 5 S2 equal to 0. This implies that, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 4 by 5 S1, that's the horizontal component, minus 3 by 5 S2 is equal to 0. This implies that S2 is equal to 4 by 3 S1. And again, uh, this is sigma f x equal to 0, sigma fy equal to 0 gives me 3 by 5 S1 plus 4 by 5 S2 is equal to 1. So if I plug this in, I get Mm. Uh, uh, this is uh, four, four, 4 by 3, so this becomes 3 upon 5 plus 16 upon 15, okay, uh, S1 is equal to 1, okay, and uh, ultimately if you look at it, if you put these through, 9 and 25, 25 upon 15 is 5 upon 3. So that means S1 is equal to 3 by 5. So that means B12 is equal to 3 by 5. And B22 is equal to 
plug it in and you'll see that this is equal to 4 by 5. Okay. Let's see uh, the horizontal vertical component of this is going to be 12 by 5. The horizontal component is 12 by 5. They cancel each other out. Vertical component of this is uh, 9 by 25. This is going to be uh, 16 by 25. 9 uh, plus 16 uh, by 25 is 25 by 25 is 1. So this is okay. So ultimately I have found out the uh, B1 thing. So therefore now I can say that S1 is going to be equal to B11 R1 plus B12 R2 and S2 is going to be B21 R1 plus B22 R2. So I know what R1 and R2, I am given R1 and R2, R1 is equal to 20 and uh, B, uh, R2 is equal to 20. So if I put it in, I can get my S1 and S2 as equal to twenty by seven minus fifteen by seven three by five four by five this is twenty this is ten okay and from that you can find out S one and S two. So the first part of the problem is done and the second part of the problem well I can actually find out both the members are 5 meters long and so therefore F1 is equal to 5 upon Ea, F2 is equal to 5 upon Ea and therefore the contribution of the first member is going to be equal to Uh, B uh, I one I uh, B one two so that's going to be equal to in this way twenty by seven three by five right uh, <clears throat> okay that this is what this is equal to B1. Okay. So if you look at it, F1 is equal to B1 transpose F1 B1 trans. So this is going to be equal to 20 by 7, 3 by 5, 5 upon Ea, 20 by 7, 3 upon 5. And you can find out F1. Similarly, you can find out F2. And once you find out F1 and F2, then you have F is equal to F1 plus F2. And finally, R is equal to F into 2010. And you've got your displacement. Okay, uh, we'll continue with this particular problem uh, in the uh, next lecture and then I'm going to extend this to see how we can use the same procedure to solve statically indeterminate uh, uh, structures. So we're going to be using the flexibility approach to solve statically indeterminate structures also. So I hope I've been able to give you a brief background on the matrix method flexibility approach you will see that there is nothing new in what I have talked okay there is it's all exactly what I have talked before it's just that I am using notation and putting it into a matrix format and then using matrix algebra okay I suggest that if you uh, are uncomfortable with matrix algebra you go back to any standard matrix algebra book and study 
the concepts uh, in the matrix algebra book. I am going to bring out a few points in the next lecture which will show that the kind of flexibility matrix that I have there are specific forms of the mat uh, flexibility matrix. More on that in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye.